Good evening, gamers. The Overwatch League is officially dead. People already knew that if you've been following the league. Uh, Overwatch World Cup just wrapped up last week, and we have an article from PC Gamer written by Andy Chalk. Thank you, Andy Chalk. Hopefully you guys don't just read headlines and come to conclusions. But this headline says, the Overwatch League is officially dead. Activision Blizzard is transitioning away from its groundbreaking esports league as teams reportedly vote to withdraw. And then we have the subtext. Subtitle, is this subtitle? This is the title, what do you call this? Subtitles, but that's not really true. A caption here. A competitive Overwatch may return, but not in its current form. This is the most truthful statement, but you can't put this in the in the headline because headlines need to be, you know, a little baity, but also teeter-tottering on the truth, which is Overwatch League is dead. Comp Overwatch may return, but not in its current form. So let's read what Mr. Andy Chalk here had to say. Earlier this year, Activision Blizzard expressed doubt about the long-term future of the Overwatch League and said its efforts to maintain the city-based pro esports league may prove unsuccessful. That has turned out to be the case, as Activision confirmed today that the Overwatch League as we know it is finished. That is true. Not even may prove to be successful. It was unsuccessful from a monetary perspective for the team owners. There was no path to profitability and the original idea of traveling from each city to city with the home based team, city based team was never going to work. And that part was unsuccessful. Now, what I will say is the Overwatch League was successful in, you know, gathering good professional players, creating a product and, and, and content and games that were very enjoyable to watch. I did enjoy watching a lot of the, the matches. I wasn't a hardcore Overwatch League fan, but I do enjoy high level Overwatch that goes back and forth. The recent Overwatch World Cup is not Overwatch League, but lots of Overwatch League players play in that. Goes to show how exciting close and high level esports in Overwatch can be. Um, so that part they nailed, but that I don't even know if you need Overwatch League to, to prove that you, you can you can play high, there's interest in high level Overwatch. In any case, let's read, uh, I think uh, Andy Chalk here summarizes it pretty well. There's a couple of other articles I was gonna go through, but I think they summarize all the recent news pretty well here. Announced in 2016, the Overwatch League was a groundbreaking idea. <laughs> yeah, modeled after conventional pro sports league. City-based teams would compete in home and away matches, eventually leading into a playoff series and world champions but high startup costs initial base franchise fees were reportedly 20 million dollars which contributed to a slow start and just a couple years after it went live the league was battered by the COVID-19 pandemic which quashed which quashed its live spectator ambitions whoever was running the Overwatch League business to business sales to these franchise owners was selling some snake oil red dragon oil what's more like like snake oil I feel like you can you can maybe produce but like this is like some fantasy like centaur oil that they sold to them to convince them to spend 20 million dollars my god the situation took a turn for the worse in 2021 following the allegations of widespread discrimination and sexual misconduct at activision blizzard which led to multiple major sponsors to end their support for the league they had another article here i think it was um it was coca-cola kellogg's and state farm which halted their advertisement. The loss of a publishing partner in China, which a situation that still isn't rectified, only added to the woes. That's right, NetEase. This is the uh, NetEase, Activision NetEase, been under strain. Activision CEO Bobby Kotick was unhappy with NetEase's 100 million investment in Bungie. Okay, okay, Mr. Kotick. Anyways, TLDR, NetEase is a publisher in China that publishes all the Blizzard games. They didn't come to an agreement, so all Blizzard games are banned, including War, uh, Warcraft, including Overwatch as well, which is also part of the reason why the recent Overwatch World Cup, if you've watched it, it was all team from China because those players are ethnically and nationally from China, but they can't represent Team China because the game is technically banned in their country. Activision acknowledged in a May filing with the SEC SEC that it faced headwinds, which are negatively impacting the operations and potentially the longevity of Overwatch League and that efforts to address them could result in significant costs and may prove unsuccessful. A month later, the company said in a quarterly financial report that at the end of the current Overwatch League season, the teams, the franchise owners and the teams would vote on an amended operating agreement. And if they did not vote to continue operating under the new terms, each team would receive a termination fee of $6 million and that would be the end of it. Earlier today, the Toronto Va Defiant via GG Recon announced its departure from the Overwatch League. This is the other article, Overactive Media, which sort of uh, is the parent company of the Toronto Defiant. They announced today that they are exiting. 
Now, if you guys don't know me and you're new to Overwatch 2, I was actually under Overactive Media and the Toronto Defiant for five years, since the inception in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. I was with this org for five years. I did not re-sign this year in 2023 with them. And it just so happens to be their final year. I was an influencer for Toronto Defiant, never a player, but a lot of their old content and stuff, I was uh, running the helm for that and, and, and doing a lot of YouTube content for them weekly during the season. But not this season. We couldn't come to an agreement. No blood, bad blood between myself and this organization. It just didn't work out with their sponsors and my sponsors. That's right. This year, I think Overactive and Toronto Fine signed with AMD, but I already worked a lot individually with uh, NVIDIA and Intel. And if you guys follow big tech companies, you know, usually they don't really like it when you have a uh, competing, when you're working with competing brands. It's not even just like an Overwatch thing. This is like in, in in all of the world, like if you're sponsored by Red Bull, Coca-Cola is going to want nothing to do with you or like, you know, or like Red Bull, if you're already signed with them and be like, yo, why the fuck are you working with Coca-Cola, bitch? You're with us, you know, you kind of like own a category. That's just how it works. Or like, you know, in basketball, if Damian Lillard is signed with Adidas, he can't wear the Nikes that Giannis gives him. You know what I'm saying? Overactive media. November 8, 2023, this was yesterday, a leading sports media and entertainment company for today's generation of fans today announced that it entered a final agreement with Activision Blizzard regarding the previously announced termination of its team participation agreement in the Overwatch League. The agreement allows Overactive to exit its commitment with the Overwatch League and provide it with strength and financial stability. Unless otherwise specified, all amounts are in Canadian dollars. Overactive received a termination payment of $8.26 million Canadian, which is about 6 million USD from Activision Blizzard. This this payment will be net of approximately 916000 or that much for payments paid in advance by the league to Toronto for a total payment of 7.1 million CAD. And will bolster Overactive's cash, cash position to over 15 million. The development comes as Overactive continues to realign its strategic focus and prepare for the new era of Overwatch esports in 2024 and beyond. Okay, quote unquote. This strategic restructuring of our league assets marks a new chapter for Overactive, said Adam Adamu, uh, co founder and interim CEO of Overactive Media. We extend our deepest thanks to the Overwatch League as fans and the community for their unwavering support. Toronto Defiant has proudly competed under the league's banner and we built an incredible memories together as we transition into the next phase of Overwatch Esports. We look forward to the opportunities that lie ahead. Continued Mr. Uh, Adamu said, our commitment to our teams in esports is stronger than ever and we believe this move is a crucial step to ensuring their continued success. We're eager to share more about our vision for Toronto Defiant and our plans to return to Overwatch Esports. We expect more information to come uh, on this front soon. So this agreement with Activision Blizzard signifies an important strategic realignment for Overactive, allowing the company to reinvest in its core business and recommit to its primary mission. The financial implications of the agreement, including the termination payout, will be reflected in the Overactive's fourth quarter results. So TLDR with Overactive Media accepting this, all teams took the 6 million termination fee. So previously, if they wanted to continue the Overwatch League in its current form, I think it had to have a unanimous vote from all the team owners to continue. But if you're a team owner and you're $20 million in the hole with no path to profitability with this original model uh, pitched in 2018 to fly city to city, ain't no way any smart team owner would say, yes, let me continue bleeding money out the ass. But what this does tell me is that they do want to stay as the brand Toronto Defiant. So the brand isn't in it ending, but there could be grassroots esports in competitive Overwatch to return, and maybe teams will compete under the Toronto Defiant brand, just not under this Overwatch League esport product that was originally promised. Now, following that announcement, the esports advocate reported that a majority of teams have voted to exit the league. Other teams have not yet made formal announcements of the departure, but hinted at things happening so this is a vancouver titans tweet florida mayhem tweeting owl ending atlanta rain not making the finals leave never won the title you wake up yeah just a little bit of memes here okay so in a statement provided to pc gamer activision blizzard confirmed that the overwatch league will not return in its current form good because it was not going to work long term i'm sure whatever kind of esports exists for overwatch will be enjoyable to watch because people like watching high level overwatch but just not in its current form we are transitioning from the overwatch league and evolving competitive overwatch in a new direction a spokesperson said we are grateful to everyone who made Made Owl possible and remain focused on building our vision of a revitalized esports program. We will share details with you in the near future. So it's not necessarily a full stop for Overwatch as an esport, uh, Adamu said in a Defiant withdrawal announcement. Blah blah blah. blah. Eager to share more about the vision of Toronto Defiant. Also, there have been reports that Activision Blizzard is in talks with third parties 
to operate a return to League in 2024. Whatever happens, the city-based format that was the League's defining foundation is gone, and what will take its place is anyone's guess. That model was just too early for its time. Too early. Now, this links to a Dexerto article by Declan McLaughlin. So this was another report saying the Overwatch League is in talks with the third party tournament organizers with ESL Face It Group and WDG Esports. His name is Declan. My, my fault. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have never met a person named Declan or Declan. <laughs> um, ESL Face It Group will take over operations in North America and Europe while WDG Esports would take over production in Asia. These are talk these talks are in early stages. However, as the various AL franchises have helped to have have to hold a vote for the future, if they vote against a continuation, they'll receive the termination. Yes, we know about the six million dollar payout. Yes, my name is CarQ. It's the same as you guys coming in here and being like, is it Kark or CarQ? The takeaway point is uh in talks with ESL Face It and WDG. I recognize this brand from Counter Strike. Uh, I don't really recognize WDG Esports, but this is good. So at the end of the day, uh, Overwatch Esports may still exist just in a different form. And this is good for the league. If there's going to be a lot of money be being injected into Overwatch Esports, hopefully it goes into the hands of the players and a fair payment to the rest of uh, the production and people making the show run. Because the problem with like a big injection like like Overwatch League did is that like eventually you run out of funds, which is kind of what happened earlier this year. They laid off so many of the hardworking staff at Overwatch League earlier this year. I follow a bunch of them on Twitter. I worked with some of them before and I felt really bad um, that they had like a skeleton crew finish out the season, but they didn't even have enough funds to pay them for the rest of the season, which was kind of like a disappointment. At least like I feel for them. They worked so hard for five years and they got let go in like, what, was it May this year? They couldn't even finish the season. No more funds. That's not good. Anyways, those are the articles. That's the update with Overwatch League. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments.